Nobody really likes a team that wins a lot. On a per 90 basis, that's actually the best goal scoring rate for any central midfielder across the top five European leagues. Tune in for the Nationalmannschaft. A good tournament for Germany wins winning the Euros. Um, there's not much less than that that would be considered good, although I think if Germany make it into the semi-finals, that would probably be seen as acceptable. So not a lot of room for, for error, not a lot of margin there for Joachim Löw in his last tournament. Um, some apprehension, as there always is, that Germany are not pretty good, but at the same time, huge expectations. So uh, that weird sort of combination of people expecting the worst, but at the same time, not settling for much than the very best. But Germany in a lucky position to have won a few Euros, of course, but I guess the iconic moment forever associated with the competition is probably Oliver Bierhoff scoring the golden goal against the Czech Republic at Wembley. And then um, in also association with that, Jürgen Klinsmann receiving the trophy from the Queen of England with her lovely uh, white gloves, etc. There are some pretty good moments and of course there are also some non-iconic moments, if you will, because uh, Euro 2000, Euro 2004 have also gone down in history um, for being uh, famously bad or infamously bad for Germany. And they've been also been important, uh, albeit in a slightly different way, for German football reinventing itself. Selling Germany to neutral fans isn't always the easiest of pitches. Um, nobody really likes a team that wins a lot. Perhaps not the romantic choice, not the choice for those who want underdogs. But I think if you're looking for a team that uh, is pretty youthful, pretty attacking, uh, perhaps not quite at its best, but uh, still developing, still progressing, and is committed to, to playing attacking football, then you could do a lot worse in Germany. They will try to play as a team. I think a lot of teams will just have an, a collection of individuals thrown together on the pitch and they have to sort this out. Germany will try to be a little bit more cohesive in that respect. And if you want that, if you enjoy that, then tune in for the Nationalmannschaft. If there's one player who I think Germany can absolutely not miss and who has to pull his weight, then it's uh, Joshua Kimmich at the heart of the midfield. Uh, he's become a real leader for this team, the emotional uh, focal point, if you will, uh, as well as uh, tactically a hugely important player. The mentality, uh, the leadership that he provides is absolutely vital for this Germany team. Germany have quite a few weaknesses, so I'm not sure you can necessarily prioritise them. Uh, one is certainly, I think, the defence. I wouldn't necessarily point the finger at specific players there, but it's more uh, an inability to defend properly as a team. And I think that, that starts, of course, further up where Joachim Löw hasn't really found, I think, a nice balance between his uh, instincts, which are to go forward and have free-flowing football and a lot of attacking players, but also having that solidity that you absolutely need if you want to win the competition. Uh, it hasn't really been there since uh, Euro 2016, and even then Germany were a little bit dubious in that respect. So, yeah, defensively, not, not the strongest Germany team going into this competition. For someone who's perhaps new to this level and who might have a big impact, you could do worse than mention Jamal Musiala, whose ascent over the last few months has been absolutely fantastic, meteoric. There's, I think, a strong chance that we will see him in action, maybe not as a starter, but as the go-to guy when Germany are in a tight spot. And unfortunately, I expect him to be in plenty of tight spots. So good opportunity for him to do something special. I think they're particularly well stacked in, in midfield. Um, whoever that may be in terms of the starting lineup, I think their squad is good in midfield. They've got obviously likes with Tony Kroos, Ilkay Gundogan, uh, Joshua Kimmich and, and Leon Goretzka can come in as well. And 
I think they're strong in midfield. I think they're maybe a little bit light at the top end, and that's that's not to say that they haven't got good forwards. They've got some great forwards in the likes of you know Timo Werner, Serge Gnabry, Kai Havertz can play that um, that false nine role. Leroy Sané coming from wide, and, and Thomas Muller, of course, being recalled into the squad. But I feel they may be missing that real prolific striker where in the tight games where it's yeah there's not too much too many goals in it. I think almost that. Miroslav closer uh, profile, it may be missing that real striker at that top end. I think in terms of the numbers that he's put up this season, I think it's got to be Ilkay Gundogan who stands out from a data perspective. I mean, he's been key to Manchester City's title win this season. He's having his best goal scoring season. Um, he's actually the, the highest goal scorer of any central midfielder in the, the Premier League. Um, and on a per 90 minute basis, it's actually the best goal scoring rate that he's got um, for any central midfielder across the top five European leagues as well. So. Of course, it's not just about his goal scoring. I think one thing that's that stood out this season is just how you know good he is for a midfielder at getting the ball into dangerous areas, receiving the ball into dangerous areas uh, to progress the attack as well. And he rarely gives the ball away as well. He retains possession really neatly. So, again, arguably having his, his best season of his career um, so far, certainly from a data perspective. I think for me, based on who's in the Germany squad, I think it would be Florian Neuhaus at uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, 24 years old, really versatile midfielder, and he's got a really graceful technique on the ball. And he operates almost in a, in a playmaker role, a deep-lying playmaker role. He plays in a, a midfield too, fairly deep, but I think he's capable of playing in, in more of an attacking role if, if needed, but shows his versatility. And, he progresses the, the play really well. He can either carry it forward himself or he can progress it with a, a really neat pass. He's got a great weight of pass on him and he profiles really well in, in terms of that contribution towards the attack as well. And There are rumours linking in with Liverpool and I think that would fit them in terms of that age profile of him and the versatility that he can he can bring. But I imagine that you know any top club will be keeping an eye on him for sure. It's tough to say just how much of an awareness of this England team there is in Germany beyond the obvious uh, two who, of course, play in Germany, Jude Bellingham and, and Jaden Stuncher. I think uh, they're highly valued and they're highly rated because of their fantastic performances for Borussia Dortmund this season and in Stuncher's case, uh, the seasons before that. By and large, this might surprise uh, one or two of our uh, viewers, but uh, the English team is actually pretty well liked in Germany uh, as, a, as a basic rule. So it wouldn't be the worst team to get behind if and when Germany get knocked out. Hello, I'm David Ornstein, and I'm here to tell you what The Athletic has planned across its podcast network during the Euros. You can catch me alongside Mark Chapman and a range of other athletic writers on The England Show throughout the tournament, bringing you the very latest news and insight from the England camp every single day. Prior to the big kickoff, we're releasing an eight-part documentary series telling the stories of the past eight tournaments starting with the sounds and smells of Euro 88 and finishing in 2016. There'll also be nightly episodes of The Totally Football Show, nine zonal marking podcasts from Michael Cox's tactics and analytics team, and Adam Hurry's football cliches will take a look at the competition's alternative storylines. So, with what felt like a never-ending domestic season finally behind us, we've got all of your Euro 2020 needs covered. Check out every show for free wherever you get your podcasts.